this is 16 kilobytes of RAM in Minecraft. That is more than the 14 kilobyte memory module of the Saturn V, one of the most powerful rockets ever flown, and the one that took humans to the moon. This memory module was a hand-built marvel of engineering that played a crucial role in guiding the rocket on its historic journey. It was cutting-edge technology and it helped usher in a new era of space exploration. Fast forward to today and I build a RAM module in Minecraft that has a higher storage capacity, even though it's just a virtual creation inside the game. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It's a form of computer memory that can be read and changed in any order. I started building RAM after creating a 16 color display in Minecraft. I needed a way to store the color of each pixel so that I could later select a specific pixel and read its color. By doing this I can change just one pixel instead of the entire frame and since I'm using concrete powder as pixels I can then sort it back into the correct color storage. This way I will never run out of concrete powder. This also makes reversing a change possible because I can also save the old value for a pixel. But how do I store this information? Let's take a look at the memory module from the Saturn V and see how it stored data. The module stored information such as when to separate the stages and how the flight path should look. So the computer could compare that to its guidance systems and make the necessary corrections. The smallest unit of data that a computer can process and store is called a bit. It's always in one of two physical states, on or off. The state is represented by a single binary value, a 1 or a 0. The Saturn V used core memory. It was built from tiny fairy drinks called cores, storing one bit in each core by magnetizing the core either clockwise or counterclockwise. A core was magnetized by sending a pulse of current through the wires threaded to the core. The magnetization could be reversed by sending a pulse in the opposite direction. To read the value of a core, a pulse flipped the core to the zero state. If the core was in a one state previously, the changing magnetic field created a voltage in a sense wire threaded to the cores. But if the core was in the zero state already, the magnetic field wouldn't change and the sense wire wouldn't pick up a value. Thus, the value of the bit in the core was read by resetting the core to zero and testing the sense wire. An important characteristic of core memory was that the process of reading a core destroyed its value, so it needed to be rewritten. There isn't any magnetism or electricity in Minecraft, but we have redstone. There are a few ways to store bits in Minecraft. The easiest way is to use rails and observers, or a redstone line and torches. If there is an observer, it will send a signal, so the bit represents 1, and if not, it will represent 0. But this cannot be used as RAM, since it can't be changed. This form of memory is called ROM. RAM, on the other hand, needs to be read and changed in any order. There are several different ways this can be achieved using redstone. Repeater locking is commonly used for this purpose or using a system like this where the observer is locked and to read the memory it gets unlocked. Another way to store information is using comparators and signal strength. Redstone can have 16 different values from 0 up to 15. This equals 4 bits, so one comparator can save 4 bits. The problem with this method is that it's very slow to transfer information over long distances. Using just the binary system is much faster, but also bigger. And even then, transferring data via redstone lines or rails is still slow over long distances. And since my display will need a large amount of RAM, it's very important that this is quick, since the RAM unit will be very big. But luckily there is already a solution for this problem. Instant rails. These were developed by Kaixen and Inspector Talon, and they are the reason I was able to develop RAM this fast. With these wires you can send a signal hundreds of blocks instantly. So it's perfect for sending a signal over a long distance. In my previous video I showed how I used music disk to store images. And for the RAM I also chose music disk as a way to store information. There are currently 50 music disks in Minecraft, and each will give a different signal strength as output when placed inside the sugar box. So by using music disk you can store 16 different values. That equals 4 bits. Previously I just stored the music disk inside chalkers that I put in a chest. That makes for a very compact way to store data but it behaves kind of like a tape. You can't just read one specific disk. To get to a specific value you first need to go through every disk that comes before that one. And you can only go forwards not backwards. Also if I just put a disk in without taking one out it will mess up all the information that comes after that point. For RAM I need to be able to read and write in any order, so I needed to come up with a new design. 
That is where instant drop arrives come in. They use the instant wire to instantly send an item through a line of droppers. We can store music discs separately, one by one next to an instant dropper line. And when we want to read a specific location, we can send a signal to that location. That puts the music disc inside the dropper line, which then transports it to this jukebox where it can be read. We can now read data from a specific location. Now we also need a way to send the disk back where it came from, or to a new location in order to store data. I discovered that it matters where you activate the instant rail, because the disk will always travel one block further than the point of activation. This can be used to send the music disk to a specific location where we then just unlock the hopper for a short while so that the music disk can enter it. Now we have a read and a write line. By timing the write, you can store a disk at a specific location or acquire it from that location. If there is already a disk at that location and you send the disk to that location, the new disk will be stored and the old disk will be acquired from that location. So you can read and write at a location with one action. Putting 8 slices next to each other and wiring everything up looks like this. When a slice receives the signal, it will activate the instant dropper line one block before the slice and then unlock the hopper. After that, the second instant dropper line activates and if there is a disk in the slice, it will go into the jukebox and if there is a disk in the write line, it will end up in that slice. So, when writing data you need to make sure that the information previously stored in that slice was not important, because it will be replaced. And when reading data, you need to make sure to put the disk back into the slice after reading it. So just like core memory, it also needs to rewrite data after reading it. Now we need to find a way to select each slice individually. Here's how the selection of each bit worked in core memory. Using a separate wire to flip each core would be impractical. So a grid of wires was used to select the core. A small current has no effect on the core, but a current above a threshold would magnetize the core. This allowed for a grid of X and Y lines to select one core from the grid by energizing one X line and one Y line, each with half the necessary current. Only the core where both lines crossed would get enough current to flip, leaving the other cores unaffected. For the RAM I'm building, it also wouldn't make sense to have separate wires to select each slice. So I used a binary decoder. It can take a binary number as input and convert that into one of its outputs running on. I modified the decoder made by Kaixen. This is his version. It uses normal rails, so every 10 numbers there's a delay of one redstone tick. So I couldn't use it like this for my memory module, since that would be too slow. But it was relatively easy to upgrade it using his instant wires. Yes, it's much bigger now, but whether you decode 255 or 0, the delay is the same. Let me know in the comments if you want a tutorial where I explain how it works and show you how to build it. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. I combined the decoder with the memory module and this is how 256 slices look. It doesn't matter which number you select, 19 redstone ticks after activating it, you can read or write the disk. You can select the next slice, 4 redstone ticks after the first one, so you can write every 4 and read every 8 redstone ticks. And if you're fine with the data being deleted or being put in the next slot you read, you can also read every 4 redstone ticks. That's already 1024 bits of RAM. The decoder is bigger than the storage at this point and it's still way less storage than the Saturn V core memory had. This photo shows one core plane from the core memory. It has 128 X wires running vertically and 64 Y wires running horizontally, with a core at each intersection. For reading, a single sense wire runs through all the cores parallel to the Y wires. On plane had 8192 locations, each storing a single bit. To store a world of memory, multiple core planes were stacked together, one plane for each bit in the world. In order to select a bit of the word from each plane, each plane had a separate sense line for reading. So in total, the module was able to save 114,688 bits, which is equal to 14 kilobytes. I tried to build my RAM as compact as possible. One location is 6x8 blocks and I activated using walls, so it's very easy to just copy this layer over and over to expand the memory. I chose to have two rows next to each other and then stack 32 layers on top of each other. This way, by selecting one slice, I can read and write 64 discs at the same time, which is perfect for my color display, since that is 64 by 64 and builds the frame layer by layer. 64 discs equal 256 bits, although you will activate a lot of droppers at the same time this way, but for other applications it's very easy to modify the RAM to your needs. You could 
add another binary decoder that selects which layer you activate so you can only read one layer at a time for 8-bit system. Right now my RAM has 256 times 2 times 4 equal 2048 bits a layer and 65536 bits in total, which is still less than the memory module of the Saturn V. So I used a simple trick to double the output from the decoder. I added one bit to the input which swaps the output from the decoder from one side to the other, giving the decoder 512 outputs in total and bringing the capacity up to 131072 bits, which equals 16 kilobyte and thus more than a Saturn's 5 core memory module. I'm absolutely blown away by the amount of RAM we can now make in Minecraft and the possibilities this brings. For certain applications you could even store sharkers instead of just disks, increasing the storage capacity 27 fold. I'm very excited for the future. Let me know in the comments what you want to see this RAM being used for. You can download the binary decoder in my discord and I also have a Patreon where you can support me and download exclusive builds like my color display. Next go watch this video to see how I use music disc to first store and then print images. Thanks for watching all the way, bye!